This is the third step in a series of videos where we've been talking about how you can up level or level up your speech. That is, you have been struggling to get the jobs that you want. You've been struggling to clearly, confidently, smoothly, calmly articulate your thoughts the way you want in meetings and in important conversations. You've been struggling in social situations and so you feel like you just haven't been able to express yourself in the way that you know that you can and the way that you want to. And so this series is to give you three very practical steps that you can take immediately to take your speech and therefore your entire life, right? to take your speech to that next level. And today we're going to be talking about the third step. Now after this step, I'm going to do another video that kind of summarizes and wraps everything up. But today we'll do a very, very brief review and then we'll jump into the third step, which is for you to use your new speaking style. So we've said that in order for you to change, to improve the way you speak so that you can smoothly, clearly, and confidently say what you want, when you want, the way you want, you're going to have to create a new way of speaking, a new style of speaking. That just makes sense, right? If you keep speaking the same way, you're going to get the same outcomes, the same results. So you have to create a new way of speaking. What pro 90 does is it helps you create that new way of speaking, but we also help you create a new way of thinking or a new mindset and a new speaking identity. This series doesn't deal with those two things. We're only dealing with creating a new style of speaking. Right, so you have to create a new one that replaces your old one so that when you speak, you're saying what you want to say the way that you want to say it, and you're saying what you want to say when you want to say it, right? And so we use this kind of an acronym, CPU, right? CPU, and so we first said you create your new speaking style, and we talked about how to do that. Like Pro90D gives you a very clear pathway that has been uh, proven to work, right? And we said modeling and learning proactive speaking skills. And then the next one we said is that you want to practice, right? You want to practice using your new speaking style. We said that we have exercise, a modeling exercise, a very structured way for you to learn to model. And we have a free flow speaking exercise. Today, we're going to look at the third step. This is the third step. And the third step is for you to use. Now, I'm going to write this as an acronym or what I like to call an acrostic, right? Up and down, use. Okay. So the first thing that you want to do, and I'm writing it this way so you can remember what use means. The first thing that you want to do, if you want to be able to, to use your new speaking style, so you've created it, you've been practicing it, but now you have to get out and use it every day. And there's some scientific reasons why, and we'll talk about that. So you want to, and this is exactly what you think it might be, use your new style. Use your new style when? All the time. I'm just going to say all the time. But I also like to say every time you open your mouth to speak. You have to use your new speaking style every time you open your mouth to speak. Why? Why? Well, you have a current way of speaking. Yes? Right. Now, if you want to change, and more accurately, we should say replace your current way of speaking, then you have to create it first. Okay, this is what it looks like. This is what it feels like. I'm, I'm able to do I'm able to implement it. But I have to use a lot of mental effort because what you're doing is you're learning a new way, a new style, a new pattern of speaking. So as you're learning it and you're trying to use it, you have to use a lot of mental effort, a lot of mental energy and horsepower because it's not habit yet. It's not habit yet. So you have to start trying to, right, and being successful at using your new way of speaking all the time. Why? Well, it's very simple. The way that our brains are designed, you've created your new style of speaking. Every time you use it, 
what you are doing is you are kind of activating and using Hebb's law. Neurons that fire together, wire together. Neurons that fire together, wire together. So what are you talking about, Michael? What does it have to do with speech? Everything. Right? It has to do with what we call neuroplasticity. It's how our brains can grow and change and how we can develop new styles and ways of thinking and everything. So you have a network of neurons that manage how you speak and how you think and everything that you do, right? But we're just talking about speech rate. So you have a network of neurons, different areas of the brain that manage speech. And the current network <clears throat> produces the way that you speak now. All right. So what we have to do then is we have to rewire, <clears throat> excuse me, rewire your brain so that we develop a new network, right? A new network or new programming, if you will, that will represent your new way of speaking. So when you create your new way of speaking, you're starting to form connections between those neurons that reflect this new way of speaking, right? So the the activity, the behavior, the style, the way that you breathe, the way that you inflect your voice, the way that you use your body, are all new behaviors that you're now wiring in. So every time you use this new way of speaking, you're firing those neurons together. So the more you fire them together, the stronger they wire together. Remember that. The more you fire those neurons together, the stronger they wire together and the faster they wire together. So if you don't use your new way of speaking, which is the equivalent of firing those neurons, like the network of neurons that represent that way of speaking, the more you use it, the more you're firing them together, right? And the more you fire them together, what happens? The stronger they wire together. Now, what it, why is that important? Well, when the neurons start to wire themselves together, what they are doing is they are allowing this new behavior, this new way of speaking to become habit, right? To become habit. And so the, <clears throat> the messages, right, the communication that's transmitting between the neurons, right, the information that's going back and forth between the neurons that's telling your body what to do, what's happening is when they're firing together and they start to wire together, they start transmitting and going faster and faster, then you start feeling less and less resistance. It starts to become easier and easier for you to use that new speaking style, right? You're no longer thinking about it. So when something becomes a habit, it means it's, it's getting wired in. So you no longer have to use your prefrontal cortex, that is the, your thinking brain, to activate this new style, to think, okay, I have to speak like this, I have to do that, which requires a lot of energy. When you have wired it in together, you no longer have to think about it because now it's being controlled by your habit center, that area in your brain that controls automation, that automates things. It's what we call automaticity. It gets to the place where you no longer have to think about it. Well, how do you get it to that place? You have to use your new speaking style all the time. And we just explained the science behind why you have to use it all the time. Now, the other thing that you have to do is you're going to need to stress test. I heard this from a potential client of mine. Stress test your new speaking style, new speaking style, right? You have to stress test it, which means you have to use it. You have to use your new speaking style in various speaking situations. So you have to stress test it because if you just practice it and use it by yourself, you haven't tested it with real people. You and I both know that when you're talking to certain people in certain places, under certain conditions, your way of speaking can vary. Sometimes you feel fully confident and sometimes you don't feel confident depending on who you're speaking with or how many people are there or what the setting is, right? It all depends. So when you stress test your new speaking style, right? So you use it, you get out there and use it, you are able to desensitize yourself to the different speaking situations, to the different stressors that present themselves to you, right? 
or the way that you're viewing a situation. Oh, I'm talking to someone in authority. Oh, I'm talking to someone I don't know. Oh, I'm talking to a large group of people. Oh, I'm talking on the phone. Oh, I have to introduce myself. All these things are all different kinds of speaking situations. So you have to deliberately and proactively get out there and put yourself in those situations so that you can learn to use your new speaking style in those different situations. Does that make sense? So if you avoid phone calls, you avoid introducing yourself, you avoid large groups and all of that, then you haven't stress tested your new speaking style so that when you do have to do those things, it falls apart. So this is critical. You have to use your new speaking style all the time, right? You, you use your new speaking, you stress test, that's the S, stress test it by getting out there, putting yourself under pressure, under pressure, okay? And then the next one is related as well. You're going to expose yourself. Now, not in that way, but expose yourself. Right? And I don't mean taking off all your clothes. What I mean is you're going to get out there and expose yourself to a wide variety of speaking situations, right? You're going to stress test, get out there, put yourself under pressure. But when we say expose, yes, it includes putting yourself under pressure, but it also includes just exposing yourself to speaking to a variety of different people in a variety of different situations. Right? So you're going to be meeting new people. You're going to be speaking to people who are in authority. You're going to be speaking with your family differently, right? People that you're familiar with. Sometimes people have a hard time changing and using their new speaking style with people that they're familiar with. So you're going to be exposing yourself to them and trying to use your new speaking style. You not just try, but you're going to do it, right? Use your new speaking style. So exposure. Expose yourself as much as possible because the more you expose yourself to different speaking situations, different speaking environments, the more you will be firing those neurons, that neural network that represents your new way of speaking. And we know that the more you fire the neurons together, the stronger they wire together and the faster they wire together, which means the more it becomes a habit, the more natural it becomes, the more automatic it becomes. Then when you have that important meeting, when you have that presentation or that interview, because you've been using the, this new way of speaking and you've been putting yourself in different speaking situations, you find that you're able to use it when you're under pressure. But if you haven't been doing these things, then when you're under pressure, guess what happens? What happens is your brain starts to get distracted, right? Your, your prefrontal cortex part of our brain that makes decisions, that makes choices, that thinks, right, creates logic, part of our brain, automatically you begin focusing on different distractors, things like, oh, I have to make sure I say what I need to say. And you may even start scanning ahead and looking at words, or I think I might have a problem with this word. I hope I don't embarrass myself. Oh, look who's here. Well, this person's here. I have to talk to them. I hope I want to try to hide and make sure that I don't uh, say any words that I'm going to struggle with, right? So you start thinking about all of that. Guess what you're not thinking about? You're not thinking about using your, your new speaking style because you're probably feeling anxious and nervous. And if you do get stuck, then you feel more anxious and nervous. And then everything that you've learned goes completely out of the window. So in order for you to even be able to think about what you need to do, you got to get out there and expose yourself and stress test it and use it all the time. Then when you're under pressure, you'll be able to talk to yourself and say, ha, I need to remember to breathe. I can take my time. I don't have to rush. I need to slow down. I need to slow down. I need to breathe. I need to model. I need to model right now. I need to speak the way my model. How would my model speak right now? Right? You will have the capacity to do that when you slow down, you breathe, and you take your time, and you talk to yourself in the meeting, in the conversation, not just before, but when it's happening, if you do these things, you will have the ability to do that. If you don't do these things and you just try to implement it, then it's kind of like trying to use a technique 
when you're under pressure simply isn't going to work. Most of the time it's not going to work. But that's why when people come to me and say, oh yeah, I'm going through the program or I'm doing this and I'm, I'm trying to do this. Uh, I try to do this in this important meeting or this presentation. It just, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. It just fell apart and I slipped back into speaking the way I usually speak. You want to know why? Because you haven't been using that new speaking style all the time. So the neurons haven't fully wired together, right? They're not wired together and they're not strengthened. So once they're wired together and they're strong and the strength is there, then the signal that's communicating what it wants to different areas of your, you know, your throat and your mouth and your body, saying, hey, do this, do that, do that. Those signals become very, very strong because they've been wired together, because they've been firing together, they've been communicating on a regular basis. It's just like with any kind of relationship. If you want to build a strong relationship, you have to have uh, frequent and intimate communication with that person. It has to be frequent so that you develop a relationship, a connection with that person. If you don't communicate with that person, then the relationship between the two parties gets weaker. It gets weaker. So think of your neurons as communicating with each other and building a strong relationship with each other, right? And the, and the relationship can get so strong that they're now fused together, wired together. And now they're transmitting those signals like high speed internet or whatever is even higher than that, okay? All right, so hopefully this has been helpful for you. Uh, you have to understand that if you want to be able to use your new speaking style, which I'm sure you do, so that you can say the things that you want, when you want, the way that you want, you got to use it. And so you got to use your new speaking style when, all the time, not just when you think you need it or when you feel like, you know what, I don't really need to use it with my family and friends because I don't struggle with my family and friends. So I don't really need to use it. Yes, you do need to use it because if you don't use it then, you won't be able to use it when you need it. Makes sense, right? And, the, and the neuro, there's the neuroscience there that's, that supports that. That's the reason why. And then you got to stress test it. You got to get out there and put yourself under pressure. Because if you don't stress test what you've learned and what you're learning, then when you come under pressure, it falls apart. You don't know how to deal with it, right? And then finally, you have to expose yourself to, yes, higher pressure speaking situations, but also all different kinds, low pressure, no pressure, different kinds of people, different situations, right? So that you know how to deal with those, so that your brain knows. Remember, your brain deals with patterns. So the more speaking situations you're in, and sometimes the higher pressure ones, your brain says, oh, this is how we spoke with this person. This is how we spoke in this situation. This is how we spoke in this place. So we're going to be able to do it again. Your brain always goes back before you even know what's going on because it works off of patterns so it can be efficient. It goes back into your memory and it looks and says, how did we speak? How did we think and feel in a similar situation or in this exact situation? And it says, aha, this is how we felt, this is how we spoke, uh, this is how we thought. And so we're going to do the same thing this time, right? Because it's easier for it instead of creating some brand new way of thinking and being and speaking, it wants to go back and use what you've already done, pattern, right? So what you have to do is with that prefrontal cortex, you have to say, you have to drive it and say, I'm going to speak this way. I'm going to think this way. I'm going to feel this way. And then the more you do it, you create the history, right? You create the history, you create the memories of you speaking and feeling and thinking that way. Hope that makes sense. Thank you so much. Uh, look for my next video where we're going to be kind of doing a summary of everything that we talked about. But if you're out there and you want to accelerate, right, you want to accelerate the time that takes you to take your speech to the next level, you're going to want to work with us one-on-one. -on -one. It's the fastest way. Why? Because you get accountability, meaning you will do the things that you need to do over a period of time that's long enough for you to wire it in. When you have accountability, it helps you do that. If you're working on your own, I can almost guarantee you that many of you 
will slack off on different things. You'll do the easiest stuff. Or you'll leave out important things. When you're working with us, we make sure, and we can't make you, but we say, hey, you really need to do this. You need, really need to do this. You have to do this part. So you get the accountability. You get the evaluation. We can look at you because of our expertise. We can say, focus on this. 80-20 rule. Focus on these one or two things that will get you 80% of your results, right? Then you do that, then we move to the next thing. So you get evaluation, you get the feedback, right? So we evaluate you, then we say, ha, here's what you need to work on. We can't see what we can't see, right? We have blind spots, so some, you may think you're doing so. You may think you're speaking slow enough. You may think that you're inflecting. But your coach will tell you, ah, you need to do more, or you need to do this, or do it that way, okay? And then... You also get encouragement. So sometimes you have questions or sometimes you doubt if something's working. You get that encouragement. Uh, you just are not going to get all that stuff by yourself. Now, you can do the system and it can work by yourself and it has with tens of thousands of people, but it usually takes longer. It usually takes longer. When you work with a, co a coach, it's worth the investment. Many of my clients, I've had recent clients, I've said this before, who have gotten back their initial investment from the coaching multiple times in a new job or in a promotion or in greater sales. If they're in sales, they have their own business. They get more clients immediately. They get better jobs immediately. They get promotions immediately. I'm talking about often if you're applying for a job, you start working with us and you work hard, and if you're qualified, obviously, people get those jobs. No one can guarantee anything, right? Oh, no, 100%. But you do the work, people get the job. I just heard from someone recently. She said, oh, I just got another Hi, job using all the things Today, that you taught me. Right? Using uh, all the things that you taught me. So this works the fastest way. Had since to work with enrolling us one. Uh, with Michael that, you're not ready, Pro 90 Day. Do the self -study. Um, Thank you so much. There's been a lot of them, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give three, which um, hopefully give a sort of broad view of how it has changed my life socially. Um, my speech always held me back in certain situations, largely when it was more than one person. I could sometimes get by with stumbling my way through with one person, but... If it was a group, I found that really hard, um, especially when people are listening and all of that sort of thing. Um, I now don't have that problem at all. Um, I quite like speaking in big groups now. It's um, I feel comfortable to know that even if I think I'm going to struggle, I've got so many techniques and ways to, to speak smoothly, mainly just by slowing down. <laughs> but... So um, I no longer have that social problem. Um, my number two is speaking to my friends and family, uh, particularly my family and my parents, for whatever reason. I had this mental block where I found it harder to speak to my parents. Um, I don't have that anymore. It's completely gone. I now speak smoothly and calmly and confidently with them every single time. And it's actually made a massive impact on our relationship because well, I wouldn't want to speak to them in the past on the phone, I'm now I now ring them all the time um to have discussions which which is amazing. Um and the third example of a social situation which I now don't fear is introducing myself. I that was probably the main reason I went on the course was I really struggled. I struggled with lots of aspects of my speech, but the main one that kept me up at night was introducing myself. Um, it's still the thing that I find hardest, but I, I can just overcome that now. I might not say it every single time as smoothly as I want, but 99% of the time it comes out smoothly. And I now find myself um, being excited to go and meet people rather than hiding in the bathroom, hoping no one asks me and just... Um, being in a corner somewhere. So yeah, there are three um, examples of how Pro90D has impacted my social life.